Hello everyone, welcome back to Refit and Sale. My name's George Isted, this is Countess Charlotte, and this series of videos is known as Project Lottie. In this episode, we're gonna be doing some important stuff up here on deck. So come up here and I'll show you what's missing and what we need to fit. Well, let's take a look in the cockpit. You can see we are waiting for some cockpit decking to be put down just to finish that off. But more importantly, as this is a sailing boat, we need to be able to pull sails up with ropes and trim them. And there are no winches, there are no clutches, there are no deck organizers. There's not much of anything to do with ropes. So let's see if we can do something about that in this video. As you can see, it's an absolutely stunning day here on the River Hamble, and it's a beautiful day to unpack some boxes. This boat originally came from the factory with pretty much all Lumar equipment. So it had Lumar 40 primaries, Lumar 8 spinnaker winches, uh, Lumar 8s and Lumar 16 halyard winches from memory, and uh, various other blocks and bits and pieces. And now all of that has pretty much gone in the bin because that's how the boat was delivered to me with its original equipment. So we're gonna be upgrading all of this stuff to what is a fairly standard spec now for a Contessa. Manufacturers change, some people like Lumar, some people like Harkin, some people like Anderson, and there's a whole slew of other manufacturers out there. But to be honest with you, in the UK, Anderson, Lumar and Harkin are the most common manufacturers for people to use when they're kitting up their boats for cruising or racing. So let's start with the primary winches. I've had a nice big delivery from Harkin and these in here are hopefully some very nice Harkin 46.2 aluminium drummed winches. Here they are. So this is the largest winch that you can fit to a Contessa and it not hang over the combings and that's important because in the one design class rules there is a requirement that you have to limit the size of your primary winches so that they don't overhang the combings uh, and there we go we have a lovely beautiful Harkin 46.2 so that's gonna head up there somewhere so next up we need some spinnaker winches and some halyard winches We'll see what's in this box here. These are going to be different sizes, hopefully. And we have for the halyards, these Harkin size 20 matching aluminium drummed winches. Now this is a fairly new winch to the Harkin range. They really needed it because they had 46s and they had 30s and then they had 16s off the top of my memory. Um, and the 34s were really a bit big up here. They looked too tall. Um, they just looked a bit odd on a Contessa. And so they've brought out these 20s. I think these came out about six months ago and have been selling like hotcakes. And uh, this is the second set that I fitted to a Contessa. So these are gonna be going up there somewhere if you can see that and then we have some spinnaker winches we have a nice fresh box of Harkin awesomeness I've got to be honest I do quite like Harkin stuff and uh, it's a Lumar 15 sorry I think I said 16 this is a Lumar 15 and again this just about fits on the combing where the spinnaker winches go on this boat. I've roughly placed the spinnaker winch where it is going to go and it just about sits on top of the combing without overhanging. It's the same deal with the Genoa winches, so the primary winches. And just as I'm recording this, a helicopter has decided to fly overhead, which is always good. And if we go forward a little bit, you can see there is the halyard winch. So that is gonna be roughly placed there. But of course the halyard winch is no good without any clutches so let's see what we're going to be putting in front of these winches. Now when it comes to clutches I normally fit Spinlock XTS clutches because I know they fit, they're just the right size for the halyard loads on this boat. You can get away with the slightly smaller version, the XAS's, they are within the range of the XAS but I find particularly on a boat that's going to be raced and using high tech lines and higher loads on the halyards it's much much easier to use the XTS's. However on this boat we are going to be fitting 
these chaps here. So these are Lumar DC1 clutches. Now I've not fitted these before, but they work in a slightly different way to the spin lock. So the spin locks have a, uh, a cam which comes down onto the rope and locks it closed. These have what they call dominoes. So it's got lots of individual little um, metal plates and the rope runs through those and you can hear them inside if I shake it. I also open the opposite way to what I'm used to with the um, with the spin locks. So normally with a spin lock you'd open them that way, but actually we open these kind of in reverse if that makes sense. Um, so it's going to be interesting fitting these. I've never used them before. The owner bought them because that's what he wanted, and that's absolutely fine by me. They are rated for the loads that are going to be put on them and the size of ropes that we're going to be using. So um, apparently these things are slightly kinder to the ropes because of the way they hold the rope when it's all under load. Up on deck, if you saw the earlier videos, you may have seen that I fitted a Selden deck ring to go with the new Selden mast, but I also need some deck organizers. And I apologize for the noise. This is a working boatyard here and they're moving cradles around. Uh, so I'm going to be fitting some Spinlock T38 six, uh, six sheave deck organizers. They are a great fit for these boats because they bend slightly so they will take on the curve of the coach roof uh, which is slightly rounded so I tend to fit them and nothing else. Going back to the winches these are super easy to fit these Harkins. I'm going to take the top off so you can see inside one and I'll show you one important consideration you've got to keep in mind when fitting them. To take the top off simply pop a screwdriver down the centre and take the retaining screw out. Plastic top comes with it. And then three screws just to loosen the stripper arm, which is this stainless steel bit here. And that, uh, you don't need to take these all the way out. You just need to be able to lift it up and twist it. So that comes up, twist it, and pull it off the top. And then the drum comes off very easily like that. So inside the winch, these are not grease. These are supposed to be dry, these bearings. They're self-lubricating bearings. But the gubbins down there, or the metal gears, they are greased. So the important consideration you've got to keep in mind when fitting these winches is where that output gear is. Because on the inside, you can see there's gear teeth all the way around there. And the critical thing is that when this is under load, and I apologise again for the noise, this is a working boatyard. When this is under load, you've got to think about where the rope lead is going to be coming off the winch. Because you want to be pulling the drum of the winch into the teeth there, not away from it. And it does say this in the instructions. So if the rope is going to be going forward like this, um, you know, the direction of load is going to be coming away from the winch like this. You need to have the gear here so that we are pulling the winch drum into those gear teeth. If we do it 180 degrees out of true, all the way around here, and uh, I'm pulling on the winch, then it's going to be pulling the drum away from that cog, which will lead to very quick wear of the aluminium drum. So that is a pretty important thing to keep in mind. So what's also nice about these winches is you can pop this off at the bottom here and you can see these little slots and this makes them really easy to fit single-handed because that just takes an M8 bolt and the M8 bolt literally slides in that little recess. You pop the plastic ring back on and then the bolts can't escape and then drop that down onto the deck. The winch is obviously going to be going onto the combing here, something like that. So the cog on the outside, the output drive cog on the outside because the load is going to be going forward. Uh, this under the deck is already reinforced. So when they make these decks, they lay up all the fiberglass and then they put a piece of plywood in all the way down underneath here and then lay up some more glass over that. So this is actually pretty thick in here. So all you need is some penny washers and the appropriate fixing and you are all good. You can make a drilling template, but sometimes the easiest way to make sure you get all your holes in the right position is just to offer up the winch and make sure it's exactly where you want it. I can see where the old winch was there, so I'm just putting it straight over the top so it's in the standard position. Bring it in a little bit, 
make sure the output drive cog, which is here, is in the right location. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark off with my drill a couple of the holes, but only two. And then I'm going to drill those out. So that's the first one marked. That's the second one marked. Pop that over there. So I'm going to drill these holes. You can see maybe in the dust there, I went through the glass fibre GRP deck and then through into the wood. And now I'm going to go back through another layer of glass. There we go, one hole. <coughs> Two holes. Now, before drilling all the rest of them off, to make sure I get them absolutely in the right place, I'm going to put a couple of nuts in, sorry, a couple of bolts in, which are not going to be long enough, but they are enough that it will hold this in position and ensure that I get the other fixings in exactly the right location. So that one's in, that one's in, and now that can't move. So I can just knock a drill through the rest of these things. In fact, I haven't actually got that in the right location. <laughs> Let's try that again in there. Now it really can't move very far at all and I can mark off the other three holes. And because I don't want to cover the winch in dust. Take that off again and I can drill the rest of the holes. And it is as simple as that. I've just been off to get some appropriately sized fixings and have installed them in the bottom of the winch like this. Like I said, it's really nice with these winches that you can put all the fixings in, they're held captive in the base of the winch. So it's very easy for just one person to install one of these without needing an extra pair of hands, something you definitely can't do with the other winch manufacturers that I mentioned earlier. Right, so next we need some sealant, which I've got here. If you look closely, I don't know if you can see it, or not, but around here there are some little gaps in the plastic and in the aluminium moulding that allow any water that gets into the winch to escape. So we need to make sure we don't fill those up with sealant, but uh, we can put a decent blob of sealant on the rest of the winch. So put a generous amount on. I like to get a decent bit around the screw holes avoid the gap and now once this is on it is just a case of sticking it down onto the deck going below with a spanner which is going to be hard to show you I admit and then come back up and clean up the squeeze out There we go. I quite like putting a bit on the screws if I can. Just a tiny bit, just to aid any additional waterproofing. It's not strictly necessary, but it doesn't do any harm either. Just to have a little bit on the thread. And that kind of squeezes itself up and out as you install the winch. Right, I'm going to flip this over. I'm just tempted. A little blob here. That'll do no harm. Spin it round so it's the right way. Find the holes and if I've drilled them nicely, 
what I should have done probably is a dry fit, but I'm fairly confident this is gonna slot into place. There we go. Beautiful. Right, I'm gonna duck down below. My camera is running out of battery, so I'm gonna switch it off. And the next shot you'll see is of this all finished. That's the winch bolted down below decks with penny washers underneath all those nuts. So that is all nice and secure. In case you're wondering, it's very warm today and it's incredibly hot in the quarter berth down there with the sun beating down. So all that's left to do is to pop the top on. So uh, just remove the instructions, which obviously I've read a million times, so I haven't read them this time. That is gonna slide on like that and then we have the stripper ring, which I need to make sure this plastic piece goes in the right way around. If it doesn't, there we go. I did have that the right way around. That goes in there. Now we need to decide where we want this um, stripper ring to finish. Now, typically, I find it probably wants to be around here, actually, because the person operating the winch is generally sitting behind it, so it makes it really obvious if that's kind of right in front of them so when the rope goes round it then comes up onto the stripper ring into the self-tailing part. I can now push that down, do up these little retaining machine screws for the stripper ring. And then the top can go on. This has got little recesses as well which locate on these screws just pops in there push that down pop that down do the central machine screw up and then she's all done one hark and winch installed I've just got another five to go it's now the next day and as you can see there's the winch that I fitted on camera yesterday and after filming I fitted its friend on the port side as well. So what I'm going to do now is fit the spinnaker winches so they're going to go in there. You can just about see the gel coat which I filled and I just need to knock the tops of that off before I fit the new winches but because it is a rinse and repeat process it's the same deal again as fitting these chaps here. I'll just stick a time lapse on and you can watch it or you can skip forward as you wish. As you can see, we now have four of the six winches installed in the cockpit. We've got to put two more up there on the coach roof for the halyards. But before we do, I want to finish the cockpit stuff. So I'm going to do something with that big, long black thing. And of course, by big, long black thing, I'm talking about this, which is the new main sheet traveler. It sits in a recess just behind me. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, on the end of this track, which is Harken again, so everything matches beautifully with the winches, uh, we have some track ends, which are these things here. So I've got a pair of these low friction ball bearing uh, sheaves on the end of these track ends. It's got rubber bumpers on the end. And going on this track is, I'll open it up, a super low friction car like this with the jammers on the car, which is, in my experience, my preferred way of doing it. You can get self-tacking one of these, which are very expensive, but they're very nice. Um, but they're, they're not entirely necessary, I think, on a Contessa where the main is relatively small. It's a nice add-on, but it's, um, 
perhaps slightly overkill on a boat that's going to be cruised and raced. So um, this needs to be fitted on that, but not until we've drilled the track to make it fit and also cut it down to size. So this is uh, one and a half meters long and I think we need it to be about 1.35, something like that. Uh, and as I said, it fits in a recessed area of the cockpit. Let me show you that now. So this is the recess on the starboard side. And if I bring you across and take all that rubbish out of the way, here's the recess on the port side. Now, what may not be obvious to you is that this recess at the end here is slightly angled. So rather than cutting the track at a right angle, I'm actually gonna be cutting it at a slight kind of 10, 20 degree angle, which I've measured, marked on the track. And it's just simply a case of taking a hacksaw to the track and cutting it down. But in terms of fitting this track, unlike the old IYE track, which was original equipment on the boats as they were built back in the 70s and 80s, that had bolts all the way through it from the top to the bottom. This has what we call blind fixings. So we've got these little stainless steel plates which will accept an M6 uh, fixing. The plate will slide up a little recess in the bottom here as will the fixing. So the fixing just sticks out at the bottom. So all I need to do is drill some holes in the deck, line up the fixings in the track, drop it down and bolt it from the underside. So I'm going to see how many of these plates I've got, but hopefully there's six and I'll do three fixings on each side. The old track had two fixings each side um, and I think three would be more appropriate to be honest with you, even with a boat that is, you know, relatively small like this. I say relatively small, the main is relatively small for the size of the boat. I'm pleased to say the track is a beautiful fit. There's just a little bit of tolerance there. It's actually gonna need to pull itself down slightly the deck because it's 1970s boat. The deck is slightly curved, but I think when I put the fixings in, it will pull itself down. I've done that before and it's not caused any issues with the track itself. However, my plans of fitting it right now have been scuppered. As I said earlier, M6 bolt supposed to locate in the end of this track here. Uh, and because they're an American company, Harken, they use Imperial fasteners, not metric. And if you're using metric, there should be in the little baggie, some little cup washers, which effectively pack out the M6 hex head nut. Um, they didn't include them. And I've just spoken to the guy I deal with at Harken UK, and he was very apologetic. And he said he's gonna get some in the post to me straight away. So, um, so my little M6, as you can see, spins in there until I get that little packer. So I'm going to have to call it a day for this particular job and come back on Monday of next week. Well, it's now Monday and you'll have to excuse the sunglasses. Uh, I know it's impersonal, but it's incredibly sunny and bright. So um, to protect my eyes, sunglasses, the very nice people at Harken have sent me the missing pieces. In fact, the guy I deal with there was very kind and he dropped them off on Saturday morning. I think he must have been passing, but um, Basically, I needed these tiny little things here, if you can see the shape of them, because they just are spacers. The M6 bolt fits in there, in theory. Yes, it does. And if I find the off cut, 
this now fits in the slot without turning in theory. Uh, yes, it does. There we go. I think I need to put a washer in there as well. Um, but yes, that now fits in there as it should. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so the plan is to drill some holes. I've already marked the center line in the little uh, track space here. I'll show you that. So I'm just gonna chuck some uh, six mil holes in, get some sealant, get some washers, get some nuts. The underside of this is not entirely flat. So I'm gonna go in with a little belt sander, which I've got just out of shot here. It's a little Makita belt sander. I use this for all sorts of jobs, but it's great if you just wanna just flatten off a little area. So I can go in and buzz it with that and bolt it on. It's super simple fitting one of these tracks, but there's an important thing you've got to remember. You need to put the track ends on before you bolt it down, but even more importantly, you need to put the car on. But I don't want to do that until I'm absolutely at the point of sealing it down, um, just in case uh, I need to faff with it, because it's a boat and it will probably require faff. There you go, you can see the centre line. I uh, worked out where the centre was and used the actual track itself in that little recess so that I could draw a line on both sides and worked out where I want the fixing so they're not going to interfere with anything else and uh, it's time to drill some holes. This has now just been dry fitted into place all with all the fixings in place. I've also put all the stuff that needs to be on the track on the track because um, it'd be a bit of a rookie mistake to bolt it down without that. Uh, the other rookie mistake I've just noticed is the cable is currently under the track. Uh, I have done that once before and had to cut the cable because that was easier than cutting the plug off. So I won't do that again. So it's just a case of sticking some sealant on all the fixings and uh, bolting it down. That is the track all installed and bolted down. The only thing I've got left to do is to fit these things so that they don't move. This has a threaded hole in it um, which you may or may not be able to see. There's one here as well. And you can see I've just put a screw loosely in there. What I need to do is mark the track. So the instructions say to pop the screw in, work out where you want this. And I'm having it so it's just over the edge. So it looks tidy. Screw this in firmly, just enough to mark the track. So I'm just gonna get a big screwdriver and hopefully it'll leave a little impression in the anodizing of the track. So let's get a big screwdriver on that and do it up and then undo it. Slide that back and there we go. I've got a little mark there, which you almost certainly won't be able to see, but it's enough for me to now drill an eight and a half millimeter hole there, which will then accept this screw. So uh, I'm going to do that on both ends. Let's do it on the side that is out of shot as well. I would say for your viewing pleasure, but obviously you can't see it. Yep, yeah, that's worked on the other side as well. And I shall drill a hole. I shall start probably with a three and a half and then go to the eight and a half. That should now have a nice hole to go in. If I can find it. There we go. Screw that down. It 
she's done. Now that we've got all the cockpit deck gear in, you can see there are four winches. They are under plastic bags just to keep them clean. And there's the track down there. We need to start thinking about what's going on the coach roof. So we've got some clutches and some winches and some deck organizers. So if you watch the earlier episodes, you will know that there is a nice shiny new deck ring there, Selden deck ring, and uh, we need to run those lines aft. And we are going to leave it there, I'm afraid. I'm going to show you the fitting of the clutches, the winches, the deck organizers in the next episode. But for now, the cockpit is all done. And as a special treat, if you follow me down, hopefully the camera will follow, you can also see the beautiful decking is also down. I just finished this off yesterday by fitting the catches here. So this is all complete less some ropes and stuff but we'll worry about that when the boat goes in the water and the mast goes up. If you've been enjoying this series of Contessa refitting action on Countess Charlotte please do stay tuned there is more to come I've still got the mast to go up I have got a couple of episodes on rebuilding the galley and there's a whole bunch of other stuff I think I fit a fuel tank in one of the videos I've pre-recorded and oh goodness knows what else there will be the launch there'll be test sales they'll be handing it over to the owner and I'm sure he'll be very pleased to take it away just as I will be very pleased to see the back of it. It's been a fantastic boat to work on but it's been here far far too long and I have got other projects to work on. So I've got a westerly down there which is a westerly Corsair which may or may not feature on the channel. There's some uh, quite extensive work that I need to do on that and there's also a very very exciting secret project which is two boats over um, which I can't really talk about at the moment but um, stay tuned for that. That's something I'm very very excited to start playing with very very soon. Anyway, uh, if you uh, want to support the show, you can do so by using the link that is down in the description. Uh, it's a PayPal link where you can buy me a beer to thank me for um, entertaining you or educating you or um, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I really, really appreciate those people that support the show using that um, link in the description. And if you can't do that, and that's totally fine, please, at the very least, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It makes a massive difference to the growth of this channel if you can do those two things for me. Now, I need to get on with my day and record the intro to the next part of the video. There we go, there's some behind the scenes for you because this doesn't always happen all in a linear filming way, if that makes sense. Remember, YouTube is not my full-time business. I fix boats for a living. I just do it as a fun kind of side project. Uh, thank you very, very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye for now.